Hi, everyone. This is uh, Don Holling with the Prep Girls Hoops uh, Network here in Illinois, and I am lucky enough tonight to be on a Zoom session with the four number one ranked players in the state of Illinois by their class. And uh, we were lucky to be able to put this together and have a little uh, time to talk tonight, and hopefully you guys can uh, get to know these girls and learn what's worked for them to be where they're at and uh, maybe learn about a little bit about what they're doing and maybe help put some of that to use for yourself. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our first questions. And first, uh, we're just going to have the girls talk a little bit about, you know, themselves, you know, who they are, where they go to school, height, you know, what uh, AAU program they play for, um, you know, uh, if they've made a college commitment, what that is, if they have not, uh, maybe some of the offers that they have. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Angela and let her start first. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm from Business Plains, Illinois. I play for Main West High School and then my AE team, Chicago Hoops Express. I'm 6'4". I play a three or a four, honestly, any position. That's fine. Um, and then I'm committed to Oregon. Greta? Um, I'm, like, I'm, sure. um, I'm a junior. I'm from Naperville. I go to Naperville North High School. Um, I'm six feet tall. I play the two three position. Um, I play for Midwest Elite and I just committed to Oregon State. Okay, great. Brianna, go ahead. Hi, I'm Brianna McDaniel. I go to Kenwood Academy. I'm 5'10. I'm a point guard. I play one through four mostly, any position that you put me in. And I play for CHE, Chicago Hoops Express. And uh, offers? Um, I have 20 plus offers and I'm just keeping my options open until it's time for me to come in. Okay, great. And Jordan? Hi, I'm Jordan Wood. I'm 6'4 and I typically play a three or four. So I'll play that for high school and college. And I attend Carmel Catholic High School in Moneyline. And for AU, I play for Midwest Elite. I currently have offers from Illinois, Iowa, and Purdue. Okay, awesome. Uh, from there, um, we'll jump into the second question, which is, I guess, a little bit more about your skill sets. Um, you know, what do you think is something that you do very well? What What are some specifics on things that you're working on to try to improve your game right now? And uh, what are some of the things that you think both in your game and then possibly physically as far as strength or those types of things that you need to improve to help take yourself to the next level. So with that, we'll start with you, Jordan, let you flip back around. Okay. Something I do best is adapting to whatever position my coach wants me to play in, whether it's like either a wing or a post and depends on that moment in time and like who we're playing against. Um, now, um, something I'm working on being able to do is like handle the ball well, like as well as like point guard. So if I'm needed at the position, I can take it on. Um, my scoring, the things I do best is my scoring, getting my teammates involved. I feel like my court vision is pretty good. <laughs> um, things that I'm trying to work on is my shot accuracy, um, moving more without the ball and help on ball help defense. Okay. Anything is, uh, and Jordan, I kind of missed the end of yours. So, if, um, if I didn't catch it, you can maybe jump back in too. But for both of you girls, is there, uh, what about from like a physical standpoint? Uh, you know, you're looking to try to get stronger, quicker, anything like that. Jordan, I'll throw it back to you. I just said physically, I need to pack on some more pounds so like I can get bigger. Okay. And we <laughs> Um, I just need to get a little bit stronger, like my legs and my upper body more. Okay. Greta? Yeah, so um, some things that I'm good at, um, I'm pretty versatile, kind of like every position at the high school level. In college, I'll probably mainly play the guard position, but I can play one through three. Um, I'm, I'm pretty strong. I've always been pretty strong, but one thing I'm trying to improve at physically is just like getting quicker and being able to, you know, jump higher. I mean, there's always little things I can improve at. And then um, some things like skill-wise that I can improve on. Um, I'm trying to uh, get better, just like staying consistent, like with my shooting and all that. And um, just like, yeah, like I guess with like stats, like just keep it consistent, you know, like three point percentage and free throw percentage. Um, and then just like working on my ball handling and things like that, because I know at the college level, like the pressure is um, a lot, you know, more intense and stuff like that. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, before I jump over to Angela, I did see a little bit that maybe they're going to be losing some of the guards at, at Oregon State. So probably something that's really going to be important for you to be able to do is handle the ball a little bit and contribute on that end when you get there. For sure. You know, I got to be able to like step in and play point guard if they need me there or if I need to, you know, uh, play the wing. So, yeah, I got to be able to shoot and handle the ball. So, yeah. yeah. Great. And one last thing before I move on to Angela, you know, obviously, as I talked about me being down here, I don't get the thrill of watching you guys play much, but I remember seeing you at the <clears throat> top 250 last fall. Right, and it looked like you're pretty comfortable if you do need to get down into the post, if you got a smaller defender on you, it seemed like you operated fairly well down there. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's something that I've worked on it and be like, I don't know, like when I was in like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I literally played the post. So like I kind of started there. I had to work into the guard position. So I have some post moves, but that's actually another area of my game that I kind of want to work on a little bit because in college, if I have a smaller defender on me, I want to be able to uh, use different post moves and stuff like that. So, okay, yeah. great. Uh, Angela, I'll turn it over to you. Um, well, I'm – uh, as I said, I was a three or four, so um, I would say my back to the basket and then face up game is pretty good. Um, I'm I'm getting more comfortable. I mean, I've been more comfortable dribbling the ball, especially this season, um, since we didn't exactly have uh, the players that we did last year for high school. Um, so in some ways, I, I mean, in most ways, I had to step up. Um, I I want to work on my shot accuracy, as everyone said. I think, I mean consistency is key and you know repetition um and then physically uh college is a lot a lot uh harder than i mean when i played in serbia they it's it's really hard just trying to push them around it's i mean and you can't um so i need to definitely pack on some muscle Okay. Has the uh, <clears throat> has the coach uh, has the coaches at Oregon already kind of given you some ideas of spe specific workouts or things that they want you doing, or is that still kind of on your own at this point? I'm still on my own because I was uh, they I was supposed to go to play in Serbia, so they were going to just let me work out with them. But now since everything sort of changed, um, mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably be getting a workout soon. Okay, neat. Um, I guess uh, talking a little bit further too about uh, about there. I mean, obviously with uh, them losing a unbelievable point guard like they are, it is uh, have they kind of told you what to expect next year as far as how what kind of style they're going to play? Is it going to be very similar? And do you, do you see they see where you might fit into that, or are things maybe going to change a little bit losing in SQ? Um, I think they're going to stay. Similar because we uh, one of our uh, she was this year she was a freshman she's pretty good um, so she'd probably take the point guard or guard position even most likely Sabrina's position and then I think uh, the one that's going to be sort of hard to fill is probably Satu's position because she was very versatile she could post up she could play off the dribble and shoot and everything so um, I think that's that's sort of going to hurt us but. It's not going to exactly hurt us. It's just going to be, you know, we're going to have to play catch up in a way. Sure. I mean, it's hard to replace somebody with the talent of Sabrina. It's just, that's just the way it is. It's not a lot yeah. of players around like her. Um, yeah. And part of the reason I asked that too, is I know I, um, I didn't get a chance to watch Oregon play a ton, but when I did, it seems like you see a lot of highlights and a lot of games of them running a lot of <clears throat> horns type sets, a lot of high ball screens and, and, you know, what, again, what, opportunities I've had to watch you play it seems like that's something that you could fit into well because you are pretty versatile um you know looks like you could you know pick and pop and pick and roll and maybe have some success in in that uh, similar type system yeah using screens is definitely um it's it's easier to get open because there's so many different ways you could go like or roll towards the basket or out and flare and yeah okay great um <clears throat> rolling on to the next question you know um just kind of trying to help the folks get to know all of you guys and, and uh, talk a little bit about sort of your, you know, your history in the game and your background and, um, you know, mm -hmm. your influences. Um, I'll start with Angela and just kind of we'll talk about, you know, who are some of the players that, you know, especially when you were younger and you were first getting started, who are some of the players that you looked up to and inspired, were inspired by, maybe, uh, you know, tried to emulate their game and, and, uh, 
you know, I don't know, I think a lot of us are probably similar. You know, you grow up as a little kid out in the, uh, out in your driveway playing ball and three, two, one, the end of the game, you're trying to hit a last second shot. Well, who was it you were pretending to be when you did that? Um, and maybe also, you know, rolling forward to now, um, you know, who is that somebody different now? Who do you see yourself as? Who do you pattern your game after? Who are you watching clips of trying to figure out how to, you know, like say, take that to the next level and do what those players are doing. So uh, Angela, go ahead and go first and maybe help us get to know who those people are for you. Oh, it's, it's definitely changed since I was younger. It went from uh, Maya Moore. I watched her a lot when Elena has to be a point um, group. I can exactly position anymore. But Elena Deladon definitely um, just, you know, her back to the game or back Back to the basket's really good. Um, but then I think throughout high school, it was definitely Brianna Stewart and Kevin Durant because they're long, but they could also shoot. They could play off uh, the dribble and everything and, you know, post up. So I'm just trying to be as versatile as possible and try to keep my game like theirs. Um, but when I, when I watch basketball, I try to watch not like everyone, but like just to pick up the good habit, habits out of everyone's game. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, Greta, we'll move on to you. Um, yeah, so some people I looked up to, um, a few of them are actually pretty similar. When I was younger, I looked up to Kevin Durant and Maya Moore and Elena Deladon, too. Um, yeah, like Angela said, like Elena Deladon, like she's, she can play with her back to the basket and she can shoot and you know, drive and everything. So I always, and she used to play for the Chicago Sky, so I was a huge fan. Um, so I used to, yeah, like watch her a lot. And then Kevin Durant's a very similar player. Um, but someone I admired a lot when I was younger was Larry Bird. Like, he was my favorite player, and he's still my favorite player. And he's why I wear number 33 now. But I just loved, like, how smooth he played and, you know, like, how, how good of a shooter he was and a good passer and his IQ. And those were things that, like, I always looked up to and I would try to kind of do myself. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's kind of a neat one, too, because, uh, you know, for those of us that are <laughs> – it's kind of neat, I guess, first of all, for someone that's quite a bit older to, to know that someone that's quite a bit younger yeah. uh, <clears throat> paid attention to him. And then it's, I think it's also a player like that is uh, <clears throat> kind of neat for, you know, all kinds of kids to pay attention to because he certainly proved that, it, you know, obviously he was tall, but he wasn't that athletic and it proved that you don't have to be the greatest athlete on the – on the floor, it certainly helps if you are, but you don't have to be, and you can still be a pretty darn good player. Right, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, the other thing, again, for a lot of people that don't know him, that that's, you know, I think is a, and it's, that's a lot for similar for some of the players, other players that both you and Angela mentioned, you know, the players that do more than one thing, you know, and you don't have to, it's always nice to score points, but every team needs people that can do a little bit of everything, just like all of you girls have talked about your versatility. So that's pretty cool. Um, Rihanna, we'll move on to you. What, uh, who are some of those players for uh, people for you? Um, when I was starting to come up, um, I really like Derek Rose and Candice Parker. Um, Derek Rose, you know how to grade his, um, his shot off the dribble and how to break down his defender. And Candice Parker, she know how to move from the post all on, on out to the perimeter, and I just love that about her game. And now, um, Derrick Rose is still the same, and I, I like Diamond the Shields because she knows how to do everything. Okay, those are great, um, and uh, nice to have some hometown folks there too that you can kind of you know, follow, and it's a little bit easier. I mean, we talked about uh, Delano playing with Chicago Sky, but also nice to have players right there from Chicago because it just makes it even that much more realistic to say, hey, I can be that person because they're coming right from the same place I am. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. Okay. Uh, Jordan, we'll move on to you. How about uh, yourself? Who are some of those players for you? When I was younger, it was definitely Brittany Griner because she was very tall and built like, really, like welly. And she, like I, when I was little, I used to play like the post. And then as I started moving up, it definitely became like Jason Tatum and like Kevin Durant because they were still tall and like lanky and they knew how to get around people with like still holding the ball at the same time, like creating space. So. Yeah. And I would, <clears throat> you know, I would think, um, yeah, I guess it's probably maybe even somewhat for Bri for Brianna, but even uh, especially probably for Angela and Jordan, and maybe even right and Brianna. You know, the as a kid growing up, when you're 
when you're taller, a lot of people want to see in the post. But you know, you it's great to um, have those role models that you like. Jordan said that you know they're they're taller, just like what she was when she was younger, and you're able to watch those those players and say, hey, you know, they're tall too, but they're out on the wing playing small forward. They're not stuck in the post. Um, I guess I'll kind of just throw that little piece back to you, Jordan, then work around to some of the others too. But, I mean, how is that something that you really kind of noticed when you were young that they kind of wanted to put you in the post, but you kind of saw what other people are doing and say, hold, hold it, this is who I want to be. I don't want to be just this post player. It was kind of just like, oh, here you stay in the post, you be like this fifth man, just kind of playing around like that. And I'd always see these girls like, oh, taking these three pointers. I was like, oh, I want to do that too. So I kind of just like worked really hard like looked at different coaches to help me out with it and now I'm a three four. <laughs> yep. Angela, I'll throw it back to you real quick on that. Is that kind of what you experienced too when you were younger? Yeah, definitely uh staying inside, especially during AAU in the beginning. Um so many times I've gotten not yelled at but like just criticized that like, you know, I should start inside and go out. Um and, and I I mean I agree. I should start inside more and go out, but sometimes, I don't know, I just, just go straight to the three-point line and look for an open shot or somehow to drive. Um, usually just depends on my defender, though. You know, it depends what their size is. If they're bigger, I'm going to start outside and go in or, you know, pull up. And if they're smaller, I'm just going to go into the post. Sure. Yeah. And Greta and Brianna, I don't know, you know, obviously how quickly you guys grew when you were younger, because that's usually what it comes down to. Jordan and, and Angela are both still very tall, but you know, a lot of kids when they're younger, were you guys were you guys bigger when you were younger and kind of get in that same situation, or did you guys play guards when you were younger? I'll start with you, Greta. What what was your situation growing up? Yeah, I mean, I started playing in second grade, and like literally since ever since I'm super young, I've always been the tallest by quite a bit. I mean, now like when you compare me to other really good basketball players, I mean, I'm just like an average height. But um, yeah, I started as the five, like playing club basketball in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I was the five. And then eventually I started training with some coaches and they were like, you know, like you're, once you get to high school and college, you're going to be a small post player. So you're going to have to learn the ball skills. And I remember I started doing training with this one guy and, or I guess M14. So it's a whole, you know, academy. I started doing training with M14 and I started doing, you know, uh, ball handling and all that. And I started at a pretty young age, like middle school, sixth grade. So I was able to pick up on that. But yeah, I was forced to go in the post at a young age too. But luckily I had coaches that noticed that, you know, I'm built as a guard for, you know, the high school, college level. So yeah. Okay, great. And Brianna, how about you? Um, mostly I was handling the ball, but when someone was smaller than me, I was just going to post like my parents had helped me yeah. do stuff in the post because my mom and dad was post players when they were um playing. So they helped me with some post moves, but mostly I was handling the ball. But when I seen someone smaller than me, I go in the post. Good for you, because I think as the other three girls, uh, you know, experienced. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a, a post player. It teaches you a lot, as Greta talked about, and in the you know, even though she's kind of a guard now, but even with uh, Angela and, and Jordan, it's still things that they be they're able to put to use. But you know, so there's an awful, as we all know, there's an awful lot of girls out there that never really get out of that. They don't, you know, they're not lucky enough to pay, play for someone that sees that, hey, maybe this person has the potential to play, you know, at a very high level. And so I need to give them the opportunity to expand their game. They're only worried about, I need to win this game. And so I'm going to stick this girl in the post because that's where she's going to get me the most points. So Thank God that uh, you guys had the opportunity to to play for someone who saw more and get to a point where they saw more for you and they allowed you to expand your game. So, great. Uh, that's a nice little side note to get into. Now I want to jump into recruiting, and I guess we'll go back and start with Jordan. So, you know, for I guess mainly for Jordan and Brianna, since you guys are not at that point yet of uh, committing, um, I just kind of want to talk about what things are going to be important to you, maybe – it's academics, a specific program, or you know, specific uh, type of academic reputation, style of play, um, location. Just you know, kind of want to get to you know, get the folks out there that are listening. Maybe some ideas of if there are other girls out there who are going through the process. Maybe what someone like yourselves are thinking about, and, and what's going to be important to you in making those decisions. So, uh, Jordan, I'll throw that to you. So far in the recruitment process, like for a specific major, I'm taking business classes at my high school. 
So that might be something that I'm willing to like take on in college. And I'm young, especially like with this process. So I don't have like a specific location. I like to attend college like at this moment, but I just enjoy like speaking with coaches from all over and just getting to know them and what are their ideas for like players. Not as like as a player, but as a person as well. Okay. Um, is uh, there any, you know, from your experiences around basketball and maybe even watching some of the colleges, or are there any kind of specific style of play that you that you think you fit more into, or that you're looking for an up tempo, or you know, anything uh, anything specific that you're seeing along those lines? Not at this moment. I just kind of like I don't know. Basketball's basketball. It's just kind of just like whatever coaches have is just if I can adapt to it which I can, so just sure. go with whatever. Okay, and then as far as location, kind of all I meant there is have you thought about <clears throat> yet at all, whether you think you see yourself, you know, ending up and you know, all the way over at, uh, somewhere like Oregon, like uh, Angela, where you're all the way across the country, or do you see yourself maybe wanting to stay a little bit closer to home, or is that something that you've even really thought about yet? I haven't really thought about it. I'm kind of just been taking like this experience, like all as one. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Jordan, you, since you're just finishing your freshman year, we'll allow you to, to, to not have all those answers yet. <laughs> Hopefully it'll become more clear to you over the next few years, I'm sure. Okay, great. Uh, jump into Brianna. Do you want to talk a little bit about those kinds of things, Brianna, please? Yeah, um, I would like to feel like family is when I get to college. I wouldn't want to depend on my family as much as I do now. So I would like to have a good bond with my coaches and I can come to them about anything. Um, my style of play, I like to play fast. I like to play up tempo. I like pushing the ball. I don't like going slow that much, but yeah. Okay. Um, as far as location, have you thought about that? And you mentioned you want to have that good tight relationship with the, with the staff and the team. Have you thought about whether you want to stay close to Chicago or are you pretty wide open as to where you would end up or what's your thoughts there? Yeah, I'm pretty wide open to my options. Like I, whatever situation that I'm put in and wherever I like is, that's the place that I'm going to go. Okay. And then last, uh, that, that academic part of me, is that, have you kind of got an idea of what you think you might want to study? And is that think something you see coming into the decision or as long as it's a well-rounded academic university, you, you're not really too worried about that part yet? Um, when I come in, I want to be a veterinarian, so I want to work with big animals. So uh, like if they have a good basketball program and a good veterinarian program, I'll be perfectly fine wherever I go. Okay, great. All right, as we move on, um, you know, obviously this takes a little bit different turn with, with Greta and Angela since uh, they've made commitments. So as we get to you guys, if maybe you talk about the process as far as, you know, did you uh, take some take some visits? How many different visits did you take? Um, you know, maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, what things became important to you in making those decisions and uh, maybe share with the folks. Obviously, I don't want to you know, hate to try to get too personal, but if it kind of came down to a few different schools that you were kind of at the there at the end and maybe what the decision was that that ultimately allowed you to make your final decision, how, how that ended up standing out at the end. So, uh, Greta, I'll turn that over to you. Yeah. Um, so I probably visited about 12 different schools, and a few of them I visited more than once. Um, and so my top three schools, I'll, I visited all three. Um, and so I would say the I, – I mean, I had, like, a checklist of, like, you know, what I wanted – from a, in a school and, you know, just some schools I was able to, you know, eliminate right away. Um, even if they were great, you know, academic schools or they had that big name and all that, I was, I still eliminated those schools because I knew they weren't going to give me what I wanted. Um, and so some of the things that went into making my decision was obviously with academics. I mean, I take my academics pretty seriously and I already know that I kind of, I think I'm thinking about going into engineering or product design. And so I was looking for schools that had, um, majors or just programs um, somewhere in that area. I did a lot of research on that. If they didn't have that, normally it's kind of lost interest pretty quickly. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, like before, like style of play is pretty important to me. I think I, I watched a lot of college basketball just on TV and just like, I feel like for me, I would always try to find players that I was similar to. And if I could find players that kind of played like me, I knew that those coaches knew how to set up players to be successful like that. So um, for example, like Oregon State, 
um, Michaela Pivik and Kat Tudor, I felt like my game is like very similar to theirs. So I feel pretty comfortable that they know how to like, you know, coach a player like me. Um, and then location wise, um, for me, I mean, I wasn't like, I wasn't really planning on like, going as far as I like can like I didn't tell my parents like oh my god like I just want to like, get out of here but like at the same time I was kind of telling my parents like oh I don't want to go to a school with like a bunch of Naperville people so I kind of wanted to go somewhere interesting and obviously Oregon's like a really cool state and there's a lot of different things and it's different from Naperville and so that just kind of that was pretty intriguing to me so, yeah okay and then again as I said before I don't want to pry too far so you know, I guess, tell me what you, know, you answer in whatever way you feel comfortable. But um, I mean, were you kind of down to a, a few different schools? And if so, if you don't mind sharing who some of those were that you kind of ultimately made the final decision from? Yeah, for sure. Um, so for me, my final three schools were Iowa, Stanford, and Oregon State. And uh, Stanford and Iowa, I mean, honestly, I feel like I could have gone to those schools and had a successful career and been happy. But um, I mean, it really came down to like just a few things. And Honestly, with Oregon State, I feel like I could just thrive the most on and off the court, and I found I would have the most opportunity there. Um, like you, we said earlier, they're graduating a lot of guards, and so coming in, I know that I could possibly have a role um, as a freshman, whereas, for example, at Stanford, they keep 15 people on their roster, and they have a lot of guards right now, and they have some guards coming in, so it could be more difficult. I mean, you never really know. The future's unpredictable, but um, yeah, so that, those are some main things, and just also, something that was really important to me was like being a part of a family atmosphere, and I felt like I just connected with the Oregon State coaches really well, and I connected with the other coaches too. But um, I knew that like going there, like Brianna said, like I could you know talk to them if I ever needed anything, um, whether it's basketball or just life in general. So yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you, uh, Angela. I'll turn it over to you. You want to talk a little bit about the your situation and getting to a decision of going to Oregon? Yeah. So. Um... It was, they started recruiting me in sophomore year, I think. Um, but my whole recruiting process, it was like Greta said, like the schools that offered, like some would offer right away. And I, I just knew I wasn't going to go there. Um, so it was just, you know, elimination, I guess. And, and it came down to just where I felt most comfortable with. Um, I took a lot of visits around, like in the Midwest, um, DePaul, Marquette, Marquette a couple of times um, and then Illinois, Iowa and all those. Um, but I, I only took one official visit. I was planning on taking another to UCLA, but when I visited Oregon, it was just, it was different uh, in a good way. Um, but when I, so my final three schools were uh, Marquette, Oregon and UCLA. Uh, Marquette was my only at home one. Location really didn't matter. I know my parents would support me wherever I'd go. Um, they they obviously would like me to stay closer, but they uh, they understand. Um, uh, once uh, the Marquette coach left to UPenn, uh, so that was it was sort of like an easy like I don't even have to tell them that I'm not going to consider them anymore. Um, and then when when I visited Oregon, I actually told UCLA I'm not going to go uh, to their visit. Uh, that conversation lasted three minutes, um, and then I committed to Oregon. It was it was I don't know. I, my coaches, my teammates, the place, it's just, you know, it, like, it's, it's, I have a good feeling about it. Yeah. You know, uh, you see stories about that all the time. You know, all of us that have been around the game, you, you know, you see the announcements of kids committing to a school and, and quite often you see that same exact look that Angela just had as she was talking about it. And that same, that same concept, you know, um, just, the minute she you make you step on campus and you just realize this is it this is the place this is where i want to be and you know for some for some folks it's not that easy but thank god for some for someone like you in your situation angela it was cuz when you just know it you know it and it kind of takes away a lot of that pressure of what am i going to do it's just you just sort of the light bulb goes off and you realize this is where i'm supposed to be yeah with like when i visited other schools it always you know it felt great but like some things were just missing even if like they were small ones um, I still had to take everything in consideration but when I went to Oregon it, it was like everything seemed perfect and I was like okay that's like okay that's fine <laughs> yep Greta did you kind of get that was it that easy for you when you got on the uh, Oregon State campus or were you still kind of unsure after you left your visit 
No, yeah, I had a similar feeling too, but it's weird because I also had a similar feeling coming back from like Stanford as well. I did um, those two visits um, like within a couple of weeks. And so that's what made this um, decision even harder was I had like the same feeling, like I could picture myself somewhere um, after two visits. But, you know, then my mom was telling me like, okay, you just have to, you know, approach the situation from a different angle. You got to do some research. And so I did a lot of research into, you know, academics, you know, like, yeah, I guess like what like sort of opportunities I would have at both schools and eventually just kind of clicked. I was like, okay, yeah, like Oregon State is where I want to be. So yeah, yeah. Well, and and obviously, it, Angela, even though you didn't end up taking the uh, visit to UCLA, um, I'm sure it was uh, similar with with Greta when she got to see Stanford, uh, especially. You know. It, there's a lot of great things about the Midwest, but walking onto, uh, getting off a plane and going onto a campus in Oregon or California or things like that, it's uh, also just uh, nice. I think Greta mentioned something about how nice it is out there. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to to get off a plane and see that uh, weather, see that, uh, you know, see the, the scenery and everything. I'm sure that's it was somewhat enticing also for both of them. Yeah, it was definitely like, I don't know, when, when I was in the hotel, like they had like a big window and you woke up and it's just like like it was breathtaking breathtaking to look at awesome okay well listen we're kind of getting towards the end and rather than trying to jump into another question that we probably won't have uh, enough time for i'm going to go ahead and end there before i end i do want to recognize and and thank formally on the uh on the recording uh gerald davis from chicago hoops express i literally just sort of had an idea here um, I haven't been lucky enough to have enough of a relationship being down in Southern Illinois to get to, to know these four girls. So the only way I was able to put this together is by being smart enough to go to the right person who I knew could help me get it together. So thank you very much, uh, Gerald, for making that happen for us. Um, and thanks, girls, for, for taking the time. I know that, you know, as I said earlier, I'd hope that, you know, maybe listening to Greta and, and Angela you know, would help Jordan and, and Brianna to you know, kind of see how their, uh, you know, where their uh, plans go from here. And I'm sure there's an awful lot of players out there in Illinois and all around that'll get a chance to see this once I throw it up on YouTube and Twitter that hopefully it'll, you know, it'll give them an idea of how they should approach their future and what what to be looking for. So uh, thanks especially to, to Greta and Angela for being, for being so uh, open about your process and what was important. I think that'll help everybody else. And I know there are an awful lot of girls out there that are going to be that are, you know, at that eight, nine, 10 year old stage right now that, you know, I know it's probably hard for you guys to believe, but they're out there saying when they're counting three, two, one and taking that shot in their driveway, they're saying, I'm Angela, I'm Jordan, I'm Greta, I'm Brianna. So um, I'm sure this is going to help a lot of kids out there and be inspiring to them. So thank you very much for taking the time to, to talk to me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you. And uh, have a good night. You too. Thank you too.